Hi, so welcome to lesson number four, module seven of the Big Data and Hadoop Developer course. So in this particular lesson, we'll be having a look at the Hive query language. So before we proceed with the lesson, let's have a quick recap of the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson, we have learned about the different Hive data types. So in this particular lesson, let's have a look at Hive query language versus the structured query language and features and advanced features such as partitions and buckets. Now, when you compare Hive with SQL, Hive is mainly used when your data is really large and it has to be partitioned or divided and it can be stored in a really large cluster. And also, your Hive is very useful when you want to store data and query the data in the big data world. Whereas in SQL, you use SQL mainly when you want to store smaller amount of data as compared to big data and when you want to have row level updates and deletions possible. So here we can see that the structured uh, query language is mostly useful for both online transaction processing as well as online analytical processing. What that actually means is that the SQL can serve both as a real-time and batch database. So if you want SQL to be a real-time database, you can make it as an OLTP or an OLAP. Whereas when you compare this with Hive, Hive can never become a real-time database since Hive queries are slow and the data sets we are dealing are quite large. So mostly Hive is suitable as an online analytical processing system. Now another common comparison is on what you can achieve by using SQL and Hive query language. Where in SQL, you can have update and delete functions. You can have cell level or row level updates and deletions. Wherein, whereas in Hive, there is no possibility for an update function since it is a write only and read many system. And in SQL, data can be added, updated, deleted, and even selected or inserted. However, in Hive, you only have an option to either append the data or delete everything and reload the data. Now, the conventional RDBMS is incapable of processing large amount of data, whereas that is when the true power of Hive comes where it can process terabytes or even petabyte size of data. So here we can see that there are some common comparison within say, SQL and Hive. First of all, the select query. Well, SQL uses the standard SQL-92 format, whereas in the Hive query language, a single table or view in the form clo from close. Sort by for partial ordering, limit to limit the number of rows returned, having not supported. So in SQL, you can have the select statement with many parameters, whereas in Hive, usually you say a table, and you can have options to sort it or limit to the number of entries that has to be shown. And as there is absolutely no support for the having keyword. And if you look at the data type supported by SQL, you can see that there are integer, floating point, fixed point, text, binary, string, and temporal. There, are, there is a difference in a high, whereas we have array, map, struct, and some other data types. And if you look at the update functionality, you can update, insert, and delete in SQL. Whereas in Hive, you only have an insert override table, which will basically delete everything and override the table. Now, if you look at the functions available in SQL, there are hundreds of built-in functions. Whereas in Hive, you have only a dozen of them available. And when you say join data set A with B, the default join is an inner join in SQL, whereas it is an EQ join in HiveQL. Now, having said that, let's understand the unique features of Hive. Well, you can filter rows from a table using the where clause. For example, I might have a very large table which might have 1 million rows. I can easily use the where clause in my query. I can say something like 
where month equal to January so that all the January month data can be easily filtered. And I can also do joins. For example, if I have a customer table and a transaction table and in both the tables I have the customer ID as a common column, I can easily do all the type of joins such as EQ join, left outer, right outer and full outer. Hive also provides you a lot of aggregate functions such as sum, average, count, minimum and maximum and you can store the result either directly on HDFS directory or you can store it into another table. Now there are two types of table which are supported by Hive. There is something called manage table and external table. It also supports a concept called partitioning. So here you can see that Hive supports a concept called partition and buckets. Now we have a dedicated lesson for partition and another one for bucketing where we will be discussing that in detail. But to give you a bird's eye view, a partition is used when your table size is really big and you can divide the table based on some common functionality such as month, year, etc. A bucket can be created either inside a partition or outside a partition wherein you can create containers based on values uh, in the data which cannot be grouped together. For example, if I have a transaction data where every transaction ID is unique, I can even group them into different buckets if I want. So Hive by default when you install Hive in Hadoop, it creates a folder called Hive under the user directory and then creates a folder called warehouse under the Hive directory. And this is the place where all your databases and tables will be created. Now in Hive, every database that you create is a folder and every table that you create is also a folder within the database folder. Now when you want to load data into Hive, there are two types of data loading techniques. Either you can copy the data directly from the local file system or you can point the Hive table to an existing folder on HDFS where your data might be available. So to wrap up in this particular lesson, we have learned about the Hive QL versus SQL features and additional functionality such as partitions and buckets. That's all for this lesson.